Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of our Factorio playthrough. In the previous episode we have built the contraption for the yellow science pack. I did make a mistake though, we actually need more machines, however I'm gonna fix that later on, because our biggest issue right now is the lack of stone. If we follow the stone line you can see, yeah, there is not much left. Let's actually check this. Just four miners. I think it is time we set up another station for the stone. Now let's think about this. Just how much space are we going to require? If we have the chest right there, then we could get it out of here, but we will be running into some issues. So I'm going to move it over one more space and that should then be enough. We want to go straight at least until the station and then we join our line over there. And we're going to do the same thing here on the other side. Join the rail. Wonderful. Want to grab myself another train stop. We set this up right there. And I'm going to rename this into unload stone. Something like that should do the trick. Let's also get a bunch of signals going. Before every intersection we want to set up a chain signal. And after the intersection a rail signal. Provided we have enough space for a train afterwards. I think for the stone train, I'm actually only going to set up one of them. Let me go ahead, grab some inserters. We also want to build one locomotive and one cargo wagon. Give me iron and cargo wagon. For the time being, normal yellow belts are going to suffice. So let's do something like that. And then we're going to use a splitter. I'm then going to move over here. And if we can, this is exactly where I want to lead it. We also want to set up an additional chest for fueling. And if we can, we're going to fill this up with a little bit of coal. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure we have more than enough. We then go ahead and set up this train. Bunch of power poles cannot be missing. My splitter here and splitter there. Wonderful. Now we can go ahead and set up the loading station. The closest one that is convenient to get is going to be this one. Not a very large vein, but we can easily reach it and we will be able to also utilize the track in order to get the copper. So somewhere along these lines I wanna go all the way down here and at the same time also reveal some more of the terrain. So maybe as of this point we are gonna go down. In the process we'll have to take apart a little bit of the forest, shouldn't be too hard. Now the question is, are we going to have enough rails? I certainly hope so. And of course we encounter an even thicker forest. Never mind. However, we made it through... Oh my gosh, this is such a tiny little vein. Jeez. Oh, Hopefully there's going to be another one nearby. We're going to go ahead, plan an outpost for this going east. We should already have enough drills for this puny little vein. Bunch of uh, power poles as well. Wonderful. And now we just have to find a way to turn this around. We will have to change a lot with how the rails are going to work in the future. But for now and the starter base, I just want my materials as quickly as possible. So we're going to set up another station here. This one is going to be uh, unload. No, load stone. And then all we want is to connect the rails again. We should be able to do that there. Some chain signal here and there coming from the other side. Then we'll have a rail signal here and yeah, let's add it there. Wonderful. Time to set up the loading station here. Should be straightforward enough. As a matter of fact, because it is such a tiny vein, I'm just going to do it like so, for instance. Great. Time to bring the power back over. Let's see if we can get away with five more power poles. I doubt it. Come on, one more. Yes, it is actually enough. Ah, I love it. Well, I did have to craft a bunch more, but now I don't have any more materials. Personal Roboport Mark II. I'm actually kind of interested in that one now. Now, before I forget, we need to light up this intersection as well. Chain here and there. And then we got a rail signal here, there, and... Oh, hold the phone. Right here, we also need a chain signal and rail over there. Ah, okay, now I get it why it's red. There's actually a train stuck at the moment. We have to check out what it's doing. Ah, yeah, we totally forgot to light up this intersection here as well. That's going to be tremendously important. And now this belt is kind of in the way. We have to take this curve a little bit sooner. And now I can have more signals that actually make sense. Great stuff. Let's see if we can add the stations here. We want to load some stone until full cargo. And then we want to unload stone until empty cargo. 
and we already have the fuel. Let's set this to automatic and it should be going for it. Wow, this thing is actually much, much faster than I. But yeah, it is pretty much doing what I wanted it to do. Now we will have to take care of this encampment. So let me grab my tank and we're actually going to make our way down there. Set up a radar, take out the biters in the near vicinity. I first want to check the new mining location if everything is working all right here. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured. I totally forgot to set up the power poles for this one. Mm, that is inconvenient. But there we go. This should now be filled up fairly quickly and we have access to stone again. No, I don't actually have the materials to build a radar. That is very disappointing. But yeah, we do not have the time to slack around anymore. I'm gonna take out the biters here at the bottom. Should be no problem. Geronimo! Oh, this is actually a much smaller encampment than I first anticipated. Yeah, check this out. It's already gone. So maybe we can spy a little bit and figure out whether or not there is a larger stone deposit still. Eh, nothing really nearby. This is very resource poor here, everything. But I guess we just have to move a whale a bit further. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this spider nest here first. Take out the nasty worms there. And that's it for this nest as well. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm just gonna drive around the pollution ring at the moment and we are taking out all the nests. Though at some point, admittedly, I have to resupply. Let's do this one together. I'm gonna check out if I can do this with the piercing round magazines as well. And we're just gonna drive through the danger here. Um, yeah, we're, we're still doing okay, actually. That's not too bad. I mean, we certainly take more damage this way, but it is also more resource friendly. Okay, at this point, I really believe we should make a factory to automatically produce the modules. I do not want to craft them in my inventory. They take way too much time. So I went ahead and already planned this out. We can get away with one machine per module if we add the right amount of beacons and modules. Moreover, we will have to produce the electronic circuits. So theoretically, I should also check what I have to do to reduce the amount of copper cables I need. So I'm thinking I'm going to extract some copper and iron all the way up here. And then we can start the contraption by making the necessary circuits. And I'm going to need a whole bunch of assembling machines and beacons for it. For now, we can just get started by planning this out a little bit. We want a beacon set up with 12 beacons. This is going to reduce the amount of machines we require tremendously. Looks like we can get away with seven beacons. Well, that's still going to be kind of difficult to achieve for the copper cables. Okay, I started by splitting up the iron and copper. We will be going up here into a contraption building the green circuits, first of all. We then need the green circuits for the red circuits, but also for the first tier of modules. I left a little bit of space for beacons here and we can do the same thing on the top. So if we go ahead and do something like that, we will be able to add up to four beacons to this machine. By the way, I added a couple of construction robots to my inventory. So now if I want to change something, it's going to be much, much easier because my robots should be doing the work if I toggle the roboport. There we go. Much better. I guess we will then extract the circuit somehow and combine them on a belt. Continue this over here to the next assembling machines, which are going to be the advanced circuits. For that, we need a little bit of plastics. We already got that here. And then finally, for the processing units, we are going to need the sulfuric acid here. And we're also going to need a whole bunch of electronic circuits. So uh, just give me a brief moment to complete that. And then we continue together with the modules. Alright, I decided instead of building everything with ratio right off the bat, I'm going to build something that is expandable. We can now expand the red and blue circuits as long as we need and wish. This is not really something that needs to rely on ratios anyways. I only want to mass produce the modules as good as possible. Right now, as you can see, we are lacking the copper and that is because our miners slowly but surely are running out of it. I also upgraded everything to red belts and steel furnaces with the copper too. But you can see we only have a few mining drills left. Also with the second source, there are only five left. So I decided it is time to also build a train station for our copper. If we have a look over here, we should easily be able to add another station. I already added the rail and all the lights. And I also made sure we get access to the coal here. So they are always fueled up. But we already have a train and two cargo wagons. 
So now what I really want to copy over is something like this. Actually, we'll have to adapt it slightly. This needs to go further. So I have the space for two of these bastards. Now, let me see if we move this around here and move this over there, we can get two full rep belts in the joint. Let's go ahead and do that. The train is also being automatically fueled up and the station, let's call this unload copper, wasn't it? Yes. Then at some point we want to hop over here like so. Let's see, we need to take the curve there. Do something like this. Wonderful. And we can now keep going, join our iron line there. Let's also now research something more delicate such as coverex enrichment process or co-liquefaction. Both of which I think I just pronounced wrong, but I'm not gonna try again. Let's just go ahead and research them. Actually, let's wait with the, the enrichment there. It takes 1,500 signs. We have other things to research first. Anyways, the next thing I want to do is tap into this copper ore deposit. We can set up a train station right here, maybe there. We'll have to see. Just give me a brief moment to also accomplish this. And then I think we can continue with the modules. We should then have enough copper. Compared to what I've been used to so far, this is actually a huge deposit, admittedly. With the current setup, we probably want to go with two output lines and let's put that north so we have enough space. But here goes nothing. Outpost planner. Let's freaking do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh man, this is going to be a lot of work. But my robots, fortunately enough, are now doing everything for me. All I have to do is make sure I have enough in my inventory. And soon enough, this is also going to be my robots problems. Man, I'm so used to my fast robots at the mega base. It's kind of crazy how slow they are in the beginning. Let's maybe see how we want to do the train station. We can do it here and then I guess just loop around. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. And just like that, this has also been taken care of. We just have to make sure we signal everything now, even though this here is after the intersection, I'm not going to set up a normal signal because we don't really have the space for a train in there. But here we want a normal signal and if we come from this direction, we want a normal signal there. And possibly here in order to go straight. Now only the intersections are marked. We then set up another train station here. This one is going to be load copper. And there we go. My first miners are going for it. Absolutely wonderful. So now we only need a setup to fill up a train with two cargo wagons. Should be easy enough since I already got my stack inserters. And I think I'm just going to split things up like so. That should be good enough in order to fill this up efficiently. Okay, now I just need a whole bunch of electric mining drills and we should be golden. I mean, a really whole bunch. Now, if we're lucky, we can actually already set the train in motion here. We want to load copper and full cargo. We want to unload copper and empty cargo. You uh, can go. Yeah, it's on its merry way. So you can actually go ahead and pick me up. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make my way back here with the train. Uh, just go to the next station. And after that, I need to grab some more materials for those drills. But the most important part is we get this going now. So maybe I'm just gonna finish this line here. Ah, darn it. I don't really have enough belts at the moment. So yeah, actually, before we do anything else, I think I'm gonna build my automatic crafting system. It is now time to take this playthrough to the next level. Train, boots, 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 boots. And just like that, we should actually be good on copper for a while. Et voila, absolutely phenomenal. Now we also have two lines of copper, two red belts, that is. Let's continue with today's contraption. Now, let's see. Could we do something like this, for instance? And daisy chain three assemblers together. The first one would be making speed module level 1, then speed module 2, speed module 3, and then we continue with the next important one, the productivity module. And finally, here we would make the efficiency module. We only need access to the green circuits with the first machines. However, for the second and third tier, we're also going to need the advanced circuits and processing units. So what if we gave this a little bit more space, something along these lines? This would allow us to split the belts here and there. We would have to reroute the pipes a bit. Let's say here and there. We do this and that. 
and also a little something of this and that. We need to continue this here a little bit. Move this over by one and now we should have the space. We need a long-handed and normal inserter for the first row. Then we just daisy chain them like so. We will bring the end modules out of there. Also import the circuits. And last but not least, a little bit of power for everything. This should do the trick here and connect this to the grid. Nice. Now I would say we're already going to make some logistic storage chests here. Let's actually craft three of them. And so instead of storing the modules in normal chests, we're going to do them in logistic chests right away. We're also going to build one robo port and a couple of logistic robots. Let's maybe start with 20. Each robo port comes with an orange logistics area and a green building area. So two types of ranges for your two types of robots. Let's plot this down right here for now and I'm gonna input my logistic robots. So now I can also say I wanna store in my inventory one stack of speed modules and we're gonna do that for the productivity modules and the efficiency modules as well. Wonderful, everything is powered and ready to go. We are just missing the modules. We're gonna need four speed modules for tier one, three speed modules for tier two and nothing for tier three, which theoretically means if we produce enough circuits, we're gonna have one module per minute. Not that great, but with how time flies in this game, we're gonna be producing enough modules in no time. And of course this is now much better running in the background than me having to craft this in my inventory. Now I was thinking about how I want to fix this machine. We need a second one of these and I think I'm just going to do it on the other side. So if we free up some space here we can set this up here then set up four more beacons. We should then be able to use an underground belt here. Now ah, that's actually not possible. Yeah, I mean, either way, it is not going to be extremely elegant. So could I do this? No, just not enough space. Uh, can I extend this by one? No! Ah, come on. If we used a red belt here as well, then it's actually possible. Because then we can do this and we can do that. And yeah, okay, that is gonna work out. Not the optimal solution, admittedly. Then we bring those structures out of there on a belt. Come on, we just move over and we have another inserter there. Okay, I can sort of live with that. Ah, we got our first speed module crafted. If I get close enough, then one of the logistic robots is gonna bring it to me. And so our logistics network has been born. The first machines I want to speed up are the electronic circuits. I'm gonna focus on those. Because, yeah, we do need a whole lot for the processing units. But we're on it. It's all good. Alright, pretty good. With that out of the way, I think we solved most of the immediate problems we had. And we should be able to tackle the next contraption in the next episode, which is probably going a little bit towards the end game. Maybe we can already start working on our rocket silo and whatever the heck we need for those. But yeah, with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.